do me a favor. We can, I love it. I love it. Come on, Holy Spirit. I want you to do me a favor. I just want you to shout, I'm rich. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know some of us are too churchy. Some of y'all are too churchy for that. But come on, if you're a giver, hallelujah. If you're given according to kingdom principle, Glory to God. And as the word of God says, come on, you can shout it. I'm rich in the name of Jesus. And I'm not talking about spiritually rich. Are you rich like that too? But no, I'm rich, rich. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm rich in Jesus mighty name. And I'm not ashamed of it because it's a kingdom blessing. I'm also filled with peace. I'm also joyous. I'm also kind. I'm also patient. But I happen to also be rich in Jesus mighty name. Glory to God. And I ain't gonna let nobody take it from me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's only for the that's only for the givers and the tithers. Glory to God. I'm telling you, that's only when you give according to kingdom protocol. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let me tell you something. I might get in trouble for this. But who go, who go check me, boo? The Holy Ghost will. But other than that, who gonna check me? But but check this out. You know, it's so many people afraid of what the people in the world are going to say. Like, oh, I don't know, we should say that. You know, we don't want to make anybody feel a certain kind of way or whatever. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before God. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. The same power that saved you, the same power that heals you, Come on, the same grace that is over you to deliver you out of your struggle, out of all the impacts and the effects of the devil, it's the same power, it's the same grace that also makes you wealthy and can make you rich when you abide under covenant standards and kingdom law. I'm telling you right now, and I'm not ashamed of it. You can't be ashamed of it. And you got to call it before you see it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The same way. Mm. Come on. The Bible says, whoever confess with their mouth, Jesus says, Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead. Watch what happens. It says you shall be saved. Glory to God. Now watch this. It's the same process. Glory to God that you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Hallelujah. The principles of what we're talking about, of how when you give, when you sow, when you operate by kingdom law and the kingdom covenant, what's going to happen is that the outcome will be yours. And if he said that he's able to make all grace abound to us, so that's always having all sufficiency in everything, we can have an abundance for every good work. Well, gosh darn it. Listen. Come on, I'm confessing that, and I'm saying that, and I'm believing it, and I'm expecting it, and I'm thankful for it. Glory to God. I'm thankful. Come on. My new ride is coming. Hallelujah. My new building is coming. You understand what I'm telling you? My new means. I'm expanding in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody shout unlimited opportunity. See, Todd. Man, we're not playing games, man. This is, this is kingdom science here. We're talking about kingdom law. We're talking about what God has said. This ain't no hustle. This ain't no hustle. <laughs> this is God's words, man. Come on. And if we're not going to believe it, then what are we doing? If you don't want it, you don't have to believe it, I guess. But for the few of you who say, God, even me, for the few of you who say, God, I want every blessing that's available in Christ, I'll take it. Shoot, if I got to suffer all the suffering, come on, if I got to be abstinent, if I can't get, you know, I can't drink like I want to in the flesh, if I can't have fun and corrals, if I can't do the stuff that I want to do in the flesh, but because I got to renew mine, I'm doing something different. But if I can't do all that, if I got to have persecution by the world, if all these haters got to be on me, if the devil got to be after my family, trying to ruin my marriage, trying to impact my kids, let me tell you something. If all that is a part of what, if I can't stop none of it, I'm not going to stop what God says is mine. Hallelujah. So I'm on everything, every single blessing, and you ought to pursue it. And don't let anybody stop you. This is a season and a time where God needs the people of God, the church, meaning me and you, come on, to go after and to walk in what he has for us. We're not going to be afraid. How are you going to be afraid to pursue a promise? I don't know if I want that, God, because what they're going to say, they're going to say the same stuff they've been saying before. Let them say what they want to say. Let them talk. 
<laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Good one. Uh, I believe it was uh, uh, 50 Cent. He said this. He said, you know what? He said, I have to go and switch my style up. He said, but they can hate and talk all they want to, but I'm going to just watch the money pile up. That's what Curtis Jackson, 50 Cent said, right? And I'm saying it's the same in the spirit. Let them talk. My God, go ahead and get healed. Let them talk. You go ahead and stay delivered and get delivered from whatever glory to God from all your afflictions. I hear you, Lord. Come on, let them talk. Let them talk. You walk in what God has for you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. I love the Lord. I really love the Lord. Man, we need to be examples. <laughs> we need to be examples. We're going to be examples. We're going to walk in it. I'm telling you, God has called us to be a remnant, not because we got the truth and nobody else does, but we're going to walk in demonstration like never before. We're going to be a kingdom community, a covenant people who walk according to the word of God, who walk according to this kingdom, to the kingdom of God. And we're going to see these results. God's going to build us up. God's going to sustain us. Come on, and God's going to do something that cannot be broken in your life. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We're declaring right now every generational stronghold is broken. It's going to break in your life. It's going to stay broke. We're not having recurring cycles of I'm in one day and I'm out again. We're not going to have cycles where we up once and we down for three months. I'm talking about God is going to create his will in your life and it's going to be without hindrance. It's going to be without struggle. It's going to be without ooh, 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 volatility in Jesus mighty name. Come on. Mm, 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 mm. My God. Yes, Lord. Secured. Your deliverance secured, your mind secured. You're not going to have a breakdown again. You're not going to have to wonder, Lord, am I going to, you know, lose my mind? Nope, no more. Secured. Come on. <laughs> Come on. God says he'll keep those in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed on him. Secure. Glory to God. Secure. Come on. He says that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. You don't got to worry about it. Hallelujah. You don't got to worry. Thank you, Jesus. Your marriage secured. Come on. You're going to live a long life. Come on. The spirit of death is bound and broken and cast out in Jesus mighty name. You're not going to have an early death. Come on. You're going to live a long life. Matter of fact, the Bible says we just read it. You're going to be like a tree that sees all of its years. Isaiah 65 verse 22 and 23. And you're going to wear out the work of your hands in Jesus mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyways, let's get to what we came to talk about tonight. You don't mind. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. His truth is for all generations. And he loves us. He loves you. And I'm telling you, man, if you would just pursue it and walk in it, come on, God's got you. Hallelujah. Let's do it. First Corinthians chapter one. You know where we are. You know where we at. You know what it's about. We still doing the power of God. Come on. This is number 17. I just love how these keep getting higher and higher. And um, I'm telling you, God's got more life in it. And so we're going to just squeeze out all we can. Hallelujah. This is a quick announcement. Listen, join us. Stay with us. Uh, not stay with us, but this Sunday is going to be a powerful message. Amen. It's Pentecost Sunday. And so, you know, we're talking about the Holy Ghost this Sunday. And uh, it's going to be great. I've got a tremendous message that God is just kind of brewing in my spirit for you. And uh, it's going to be good. Invite some people out. Come on out. Same platform, but Sunday at 10 a.m. So wherever you're watching this now, join us Sunday at 10 a.m. If you don't mind. Hallelujah. All right. Mm. Oh, let me say what I just sensed the Lord saying. And, and, and well, hallelujah. Listen, in this month of May, seed time. Unlimited opportunity. Listen, do not miss this prophetic season. I personally, well, I want to encourage you to make sure that we are, what are we doing? That we're stretching. And I want you to stretch by faith and particularly in your prayers, in your actions, and especially in your giving. Listen, God doesn't need your money. I don't need your money. This church does not need your money. All right. I'm telling you this because this is a prophetic season of seed time. And I'm telling you this, when there's a grace over this, what we're sowing this month is not going to be the same as what we sow in 
October. Amen. Because there is a grace that God is releasing now. So I want to encourage you to sow. I'm telling you, some of you have been hesitant and I, and I sense this, that because you're thinking like, Lord, I want to, but I can't X, Y, and Z. I'm telling you this. Trust God. Trust God. And so give a special seat. You have to get it in the ground before this month is over. Hallelujah. Make sure you're stretching. I'm telling you this because it's a prophetic season. You know, we don't do gimmicks. And I hate that I have to give these disclaimers um, because so many people have ruined and abuse this this kingdom system of giving and just of prosperity and all that stuff and so i give this disclaimer not because we do anything gimmicky or sketchy we never have in my what am i 2007 now it's almost 16 years of pastoring i've never done any gimmicks or games or nothing like that and i never will amen and so you can trust that when we talk about this is not to get anything from you Paul, the Apostle Paul said in Philippians, this to your benefit. Hallelujah. It, it, it benefits your account when you give and when you sow. But particularly in this season, as the quote unquote waters are troubled, I want you to stretch. Me, if, listen, if you have not given a special seat this month, I want to personally encourage you as your pastor to say, listen, I want you to stretch this month. Give a seat this month that will um, be according to faith for you. Amen so that you can literally lock in this season. And I'm telling you, man, this is gonna be a seed of unlimited opportunity that we're sowing. We're believing God according to Mark 4, I believe verse 20 or something like that, where he says that, and, 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 and the seed that landed on good ground, the Bible says that it produced fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we're believing that. And I want you to sow, amen, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, don't let the devil rob you. I'm telling you, you got to listen to me. You have to sow all the seeds, sow in prayer, sow in activity, but make sure that you sow your offering and your seed. Glory to God, to the Lord. Hallelujah. In this time. All right, let's move. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. How much time I got? Lord have mercy. All right, plenty of time. Come on, he's got plenty of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. The Apostle Paul says this. I thank my God always concerning you. For the grace of God, which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you are enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you. Thank you, Jesus. So that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> who shall also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to chapter two, verse number one. Apostle Paul says, and when I came to you, brethren, I didn't come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Hallelujah. And obviously we're talking about the power of God and we're combining this and showing you how the testimony of Christ, a.k.a. Kingdom Covenant, amen, is going to release the power of God in your life. And so we're still on that track. So, Father, we pray to you tonight, telling you thank you, first of all, for signs, wonders, and miracles accompanying this word. We bless you, and we thank you even for the miracles and signs and wonders that you've done, even in our midst, even this past Sunday, God. We bless you for it. We give you all the praise. We celebrate it, and we just honor you, and we thank you, Lord, and we shout more, Lord. May it be done even more. And so, Lord, we ask tonight, as we come to you, as we gather around your word, power to heal would be present. We pray for an anointing for expansion, acceleration, and growth. Lord, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would be in our midst, that we would sense it, that we would know it, that deliverance and breakthrough would occur, that we would have an encounter by your word. Father, thank you, Lord. We pray that you would speak through my mind, speak through my mouth. Glory to God. Use my words, Holy Spirit. Use my mind. Let my thoughts be your thoughts. Be glorified in everything we do tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and a Man, all right, let's jump into this. Let's get to business, shall we? Hallelujah. We love the Lord. All right. 
power of God. Well, so much to talk about on this. It's like literally I could probably preach on this the rest of spring and summer. Don't worry, I won't. I don't think. <laughs> Glory to God. But let's do it to it. I want to talk about... Um, so much. I was trying to do something, but uh, I want to do it. All right. So we've been on this knowledge kick, right? We've been talking about knowledge. Um, knowledge is power was last Wednesday. Truth and knowledge was this past Sunday. And um, I want to keep talking about knowledge um, because the key is this, is that knowing God uh, is built upon covenant knowledge. And I want to say this as your pastor, I, my goal is not to just, Wednesdays I kind of get to be more pastoral, I guess. You know, I kind of get to share my heart, I guess, and whatever. But as your pastor, I really want to make sure that we are not, my goal is to be a conduit for Jesus and that his words would come through that, like as Jesus said in John 6, he says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And of course, I'm not Jesus. I'm not saying I'm Jesus or anything close to that. I mean, I do have him growing in me. I'm being conformed to his image. Praise the Lord, as this should you. Um, but I really believe that um, our pastors and our leaders, they are meant to convey the words and the voice of Jesus for us. And so when you are listening and when you're tuning in, don't just hear me, but I want you to tune your ear into the voice of Jesus by the flow and the breath of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because that's where you will find your encounter. That's where you will find your breakthrough and your victory. Like, don't just, you know, haphazardly. So I say that, I saying take notes, have a pen, have a notebook, have a pencil and a notebook or your iPhone or your tablet or your device or your smartphone, your Android, whatever you have, your Samsung note. You know, we're not going, you know, there's no respect for phones in Christ. Amen. But whatever it is, I want you to take notes and I want you to be able to lock in because these are things that um, you want to be able to meditate on and go back on. Amen. And not just a man corner. And just, Ooh, didn't we have a good time? All right. So here's the first one. I want you to write down. Knowing God is based upon covenant knowledge. Amen. Knowing God is based upon covenant knowledge. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 11. Let's do it to it. It says this, Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles, in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time, this is before you were saved, separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers... To the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. I'm, I'm sharing this with you because there is a status that people have that, <clears throat> um, and this is so important because you, 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 in order for you to be born again, or when you get born again, you enter to a state of knowing God. And rather of being known by God. <laughs> Knowing God and being known by God. And so what occurs is this. As we are in this state of being born again, we know God and know God. But when we're not, we don't know God. We don't know him. We can kind of uh, perceive that there might be a God. I mean... The Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, he says, even if you're an unbeliever, you can just look at creation and see, <laughs> in my best coming to America voice, there must be a God somewhere. I mean, you got to know there must be a God somewhere. You look at the stars, you look at the mountains, you look at creation, you say, man, there is a God somewhere. But even in that, it's not a deep knowledge of God. It's not a real intimate knowledge of God. The only way that we can know God is built upon the foundation of covenant knowledge. The way that God establishes knowing him. 
glory to God, relationship with him is based upon covenant knowledge, covenant knowledge. Or if we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, the testimony of Christ knowledge, all right, which is the same as covenant for those who are just tapping in, locking in with us. So it's based on covenant knowledge. And so God only because God is so God, he is so big. He is so awesome. He is so wonderful. He is so divine. He is so holy. He is so awesome that we cannot just walk up to him and be like, yo, what's good? What's up, doc? You can't do that. We, we can't just know him. We cannot treat him uncommon because he is the Lord God almighty. My God, who, who is who can counsel him? Who can reverse? He acts and who can reverse it? He moves and who can stop him? Come on, who, who can who can limit him? Who can approach him? He's he's an unapproachable light. The Bible says. God is amazing. And we're not able just to be like, yo, what's up? You can't just know him. But he establishes a way for us to know him. He establishes a way for everything he has created to interact with him. And that is through the covenant. That is through his covenant. Everything that God has done, he has made an agreement with. Glory to God. I feel like preaching. Everything he's created, everything he's done, he has made covenant agreement, covenant knowledge with it. Namely, come on, in the beginning, Glory to God. I call this the law of agreement that God said to nothing. He said, or at least to, in, to nothing in the very beginning, God said, be, and something came out of nothing. Nothing had to agree. Nothing had to make a, a, an agreement with God is saying that I will abide by your will, by your understanding, by your life, by what you have dictated and what you have said, right? There is an agreement and it has to stick to that agreement. Glory to God. God said, let there be light. And guess what? Light says, you know what? I'm coming out of nothing and I'm going to exist according to what God has spoken, according to this covenant expression that God has given me as light. Everything that God has created has a means to interact with him. And that is through covenant relationship, covenant agreement. Now, I'm telling you this because you got to know this, that it's the same for us. Is that the same for human beings that we interact with God and we know God and we um, we we have knowledge of him. It is based upon the foundation of covenant knowledge and covenant experience. <laughs> Y'all got to forgive me. Man. So knowing God. Is not just I'm telling you this because there is this fallacy going on in, in, in this day and age. Like, oh, I, I, I you know, um, I'm not I'm, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. I know God for myself. And these people use this this expression of knowing God so they can do their own thing. For the most part, most people who say they have their own relation, like, we're not spiritual. Uh, you know, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Like what? I know what this means. It means that you want to do what you want to do. Let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it a hundo, right? Let's keep it a rack. You want to do what you want to do. You, you don't really, you know, want to abide by the scriptures. You don't want to abide by the system that Jesus set up. You don't want to go to church. You don't want to be accountable. You don't want to be submitted to God's system. You want to do your own thing. And I get it, right? But but you, you can't know God that way. You can only know God, not because you make up your own way or your own rules, but you can only know God based upon covenant knowledge. Mm. You don't, you may not believe me, but in the book of Hebrews, Jesus, hallelujah, in chapter 10, verse 5, when Jesus comes into the world, come on, verse 4 says this, for it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Verse 5 says this, therefore, when Jesus comes into the world, he says, sacrifices and offerings thou hast not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. He says, in whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast taken no pleasure. Then I said, watch this. I have come in the roll of the book. It is written of me. Here's what he said he came to do. To do thy will, O God. See, the will of God is expressed in the covenant of God. Yes, Lord. The covenant, God's covenant that he makes with people, hallelujah, that he's made with creation, that he made with everything that he's created, that he touches, it, it includes his will. 
And so when Jesus says, I come to do thy will, O God, he's talking about that I'm coming to establish and to walk in and to demonstrate covenant life for these people so that they can know that the only way to God is through me. Hallelujah. Because I am the one, says Jesus, who has and who holds this new covenant truth and life. Come on. This is what he said in the Last Supper. My God, right before he died, when he was having dinner with his disciples in Luke chapter 22. Here's what the Lord says. Glory to God. Watch this. When he was taking uh, receiving communion with them, here's what he says in verse number 20. He says, in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup, which is poured out for you, watch this, is the new covenant in my blood. Jesus says it's the new covenant. So J Jesus came, watch this, to bring man to God, but the foundation of it is the basis of covenant knowledge. Ooh, it's, it's not just so that you can say, I receive you and uh, uh, make me over, which is great. But the foundation, the reason why that you have an ability to be made over, the reason why you have an ability for God to make you new, come here, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things pass away. The reason you have that is because at the foundation of it, there is a covenant. There is a, an expressed will of God that says, this is my desire. And if they do this, God says, I'll do that. And so the only way to know God is through covenant knowledge. You can't go around it. And Jesus himself bears this. Jesus comes as in, it is written of me, O Lord, I've come to do thy will, O God. Jesus comes to do and to handle and to express God's covenant. He says, this is the new covenant in my blood. And there's a revelation and a truth even in that. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. So covenant knowledge is what we want to have. And before you knew God, the Bible says when you were Gentiles, you were separate. You were distanced from the promises, the covenants of promise. You were separate from God. You were excluded. But now in Christ, we have been brought in. We who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is why this is so important. It's because the foundation of that is the covenant. I'm trying to tell you this because it is the covenant, the new covenant, which is the foundation for everyone to know God. It's the way that Adam knew God. Hosea chapter six. Glory to God. Verse number seven. Oh, we about to run. We going Bible tonight. Hosea 6 and 7, here's what it says. But like Adam, <laughs> they have transgressed the covenant. They have dealt treacherously against me. Now, here's why this is important to know, because you may not see it explicitly in Genesis's account, in the accounts in Genesis, but the Bible says Adam had a covenant. That Adam operated with God by covenant. He didn't just pop out. It wasn't just like he formed them. But when God made Adam, come on, there was a basis and a foundation for covenant knowledge and expression and life that Adam had to walk in. And watch this. And when he violated that, when he transgressed that covenant, when he ate the fruit, when he surrendered uh, the authority that God had graced him with to the devil, and he had signed over all of humanity, all of his lineage, Come on, the Bible says that's when something crazy happened. What happened? Well, the Bible says he didn't, I won't say fall because he never technically like, oops, I've fallen and I can't get up. But from a spiritual sense, the Bible says he died. Huh? He died. Now, it wasn't a physical death, but it was a spiritual death. Why? Several reasons. One, because he was disconnected from God, but he was also disconnected from his covenant. Mm, 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 mm. I'm, I'm just, let me take, let me slow walk this tonight. He was disconnected from the covenant that God had with him. And so this covenant was for him to have authority and dominion and to rule. 
and to exist like God in the earth. Let me tell you something. Ooh, we. Mm -mm -mm. That there is nothing. I don't want. I want to say this very carefully. Many of the attributes and the ways that Satan is operating in the earth is a cue for you to see with your own eyes and understanding how God wants you to exist in the earth. Yep. I'm not talking about deceiving people. I'm not talking about stealing, killing, destroying. No, I'm talking about the way that he is set up. The Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe, that he, nope, 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 nope. I take that back. Yeah, it's 2 Corinthians. It says in 2 Corinthians that he is the God of this world. Hmm. Satan is known as the God of this world. Maybe. Or ask yourself the question, why did he become the God of this world? Oh, because he took the place of Adam, who was supposed to be. The, oh, you with me now? We here, right? Because mankind was supposed to operate. Humanity was supposed to exist as gods in the world. Not El Shaddai, not Adonai, not El Elyon, the Most High God, because even Satan's not God. See, here's, here's the problem. We have no problem, and let me just take a tangent here. We have no problem, right, saying that the devil's the God of this world. He's got all power. He's blinded the minds, right? Glory to God. He's the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. How did he become that? He became that because he stole it. He stole that right and that positioning from humanity, from Adam. But we have no problem saying that. And when we say Satan is the God of this world, nobody says, but wait a minute, God is the only God. Nobody says that. Nobody questions that because we recognize the authority and the, and the, the way that he's moving. And we also recognize that God is still greater than Satan. So tell me, why is it that when we say, the church says that you, come on, are made in God's image and likeness. Why do we get so, our, our panties in a twist? <laughs> Excuse my language, I, don't, I couldn't think of nothing better to say. Like, why do we get so, like, like, oh my God, oh, we go crazy. Oh, he said, we're like gods, we're gods, we're small gods. Like, come on, people. Come on, people. How, how can you give the enemy something and be fine with him having a status that was meant for you? Oh, let's have church tonight. It was meant for you. It was meant for you. Come on. So much of what the devil has is meant for you. The way he's operating, it was meant for the church. It was meant for the believer, for God's covenant people to operate in. This is why he tried to tempt Jesus with the kingdoms of this world and the glory thereof. When Jesus was on his 40 day fast, come on, the Bible says the devil came and said, listen, if you would just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world and their glory. And we're fine saying the devil, he owns it all. He's all his. But when we tell you that the earth is the Lord's, oh my God, and the fullness thereof and the whole world and they who dwell in it, it belongs to God. The silver is mine, says God. The gold is mine, says Lord. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to me. Every resource, all glory, all kingdoms and dominion belong to God. And guess what? God can give it to whomever he wants to, who will ever bow down and worship God because it's God's to give. I need a church in here. I'm telling you this because we can't be pleased and satisfied knowing that the devil can do something, but the people of God can't do it when we were made to do what the devil is doing in the first place. I want you just to shout, it was meant for me. Oh yeah, that money, it was meant for me. Come on, come on, that, that building over there, it was meant for me. My God, that influence, it was meant for me. Bless the Lord. You better get out of here. We're not going to, why are we fine with the devil? Come on. And this is why Jesus says, when he gets up out the grave, Acts chapter 20, I mean, sorry, Matthew chapter 28, he says this, just so y'all don't get it twisted. <laughs> he says, all authority in heaven and earth. He said, look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Bless God. Come on. This is the way our God moves. This is the way Jesus functions. And then he says, I'm giving you power. 
Glory to God, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You're going to receive power now. After the Holy Ghost is coming, you're going to be my witnesses, my representatives in all the earth. My God preaching his glorious gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. All right. Let me move on. I got off that. Let me get back on track here. That just makes me mad. You know, we're supposed to be like God in the earth. He made us like that. But we can't. Oh, we're afraid. Oh, you can't say that you're like God. We got to just capitalize it. Little G. Of course, you're little G because you're created. My gosh. Nobody created God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways. Come on, just shout. It was meant for me, though. You got to know this. Come on. That's why David was so frustrated. He said, Lord, how long the wicked going to prosper? I'm living right and the wicked. I'm, I'm living right, right and I'm struggling. And the wicked are doing all kind of crazy things and, and, and they don't seem right. But come on, because what they are operating in was meant for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Meant for me. And you will receive it in Jesus' mighty name. You're going to walk in it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. See, this is where the kingdom of God comes. It comes to, to take back in the switch. This is why the first is last. And the last is going to be first. Bless the Lord. Come on. You got to hear what I'm telling you tonight. Because God is, ah, feel this. God is releasing, come on, an anointing and a grace for his people to begin to experience shiftings and, and advancements in the earth right now. Yes, Lord. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. God is going to release over his people. Come on, who are called by his name over his covenant people. He is going to release a divine acceleration and a divine, um, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Not just fast, but um, you're going to go high. I can't think of the name. I don't want to say exaltation, but in the sense of you're going to go fast and you're also going to go higher. That's for the church. As for God's people, Father, we ask that you would do it in the name of Jesus. We pray that the grace for acceleration, we pray that the grace for um, um, mm, a separation. Your word said, thank you, that, that if we would obey your commandments, that you would set us high above all the nations of the earth. And so we believe that and we pull on that tonight and we thank you. Lord. we ask that the grace would be on us as we abide by covenant. Hallelujah. As we abide by the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Somebody's going higher. Glory to God. Somebody's about to go further. Somebody is about to take the position of a place that God says was meant for you. My God, the people that are attacking you, the people that are hindering you, my God, that seem like they got control. Trust me, God says, I am the Lord. My God, he says, I am the one in control and I will switch this on you. Glory to God. And you will begin to see. The hand of God move in your life. Come on. Come on, just shout. I'm going higher. I'm going higher in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. That's a good place for a shout. Hallelujah. Now let me get back to this message. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here's what the word of God tells us. Mm, mm, mm. Scriptures tell us this. Well, again, so <clears throat> we know God. I gotta forgive me. I I don't know. I have just like so much mucus that's just generating my body. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me stop playing. So covenant knowledge, knowing God is by covenant knowledge, is by covenant knowledge. And so the only way we can know God, we can't know him on our own. This is, I'm giving back. I know we went way, way left, but let's come back. <laughs> we know God by covenant knowledge. So this is covenant. The covenant is a way that God says, this is how you know me. It's how you can begin to have relationship with me. Mm. Yes, Lord. Come on, let me take you somewhere real quick. Let's take a look. In a book. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so tripping today. Watch this. 
let's look at um where am I going? It's 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 a very basic scripture and I can't think of it right now. Well, let's do what I feel in my spirit. All right. Yeah, come on. Proverbs 4. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. We love you, Lord. We give you praise tonight. I want to read the verse. No, Proverbs 1. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 1, verse 7. Man, I got out some 4, 7. Man, 1, 7. Mm. <laughs> you got it? It says this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yet fools despise wisdom and instruction. That was it. Man, I'm sorry, right? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So what is the beginning of knowledge? The fear of the Lord. The reverence, the admiration, the acknowledgement of God is the beginning of all knowledge. Hmm. Notice this, this if you look at the original Ten Commandments that God gave Moses, the Lord told to him, he said, you shall have no other God before me. You shall have no other God before me. He says, I am the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. He says, don't worship any other gods. Put me first. Right? Here's the point I wanted to make to you, is that the fear of the Lord, the understanding, the admonition, the reverence of God is the beginning of all knowledge. So this means that, hallelujah, I don't know where I'm going here. There is a covenant-based way of not just knowing things, but knowing God and that is going to come, the foundation is the fear of the Lord. Here's why I'm telling you this. Because we have people who say, I know God my own way, but they have no fear of the Lord. No, you, you can't. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. We have people say, well, I, I'm going to do God my own way. And you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Please, let me focus. Let me get back to where I'm going. Now, rock with me just for a little bit longer, church. Y'all have been so patient. Knowing God is built upon covenant knowledge, right? The Bible says is that the part of this is the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of knowledge. So, we have to have a healthy respect, fear, again, because he is so God. He is so distant. That's why I was telling you that, because he is so big, so large, so grand, so glorious, such a divine king. You just can't say you know him. I mean, think about it. Nobody can just run up on the king of England, can you? You can just pull up like, yo, what's up, King Charles? I'm here. What's good? My guy. You can't do that, can you? No. It's infinitely more of the same principle with God, that there is a fear, there is a healthy respect. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, is that when we get born again, see, hallelujah, according to covenant knowledge, according to the covenant, we then become sons, daughters of God. This is why John chapter 1, thank you, Lord, Verse number two, I mean, I probably quote the scripture at least like every time I preach, but it's okay. John chapter one, verse 12 says this, help me, Holy Ghost. It says, but as many as received Jesus to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So when we get born again, based upon covenant, right? When we receive Christ as Lord, when we accept him, Watch this, when we accept the covenant, then we begin to operate based on covenant truth. And from there, our sonship, our sonship, and I say that inclusive of a male and female, is experienced. It is manifested. He says, as many as received him, them he gave the right to become the children of God, to, even to those who believe in his name. Who are born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, 
nor of the will of man, but of God. You see, the only way that you can actually even be born again is because there is a covenant truth, a covenant principle <laughs> that gives the opportunity for those of us who are far from God to come to know God. And so when you begin to operate by that, from that, you are able to receive the promise and the, and the, the possibility of sonship with God. Now, stay with me because it's very important. So covenant establishes sonship. You'll see this with the children of Israel in Egypt. God called them his firstborn. Why did he call them his firstborn? Well, it's because they were people of covenant. It's not that God didn't, God, but God created everybody. Yeah, but everybody ain't covenant people. <laughs> There's this saying in, in a certain community says, all skin folk ain't kin folk. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's the same way with God. Even though God created everything, everybody's not a son of God. Everybody doesn't have that relationship with God because everybody are not covenant people. And so covenant knowledge, covenant awareness is the way that God establishes those who are his and those who are not. And those who are his, he says, you can become a son. Romans chapter nine. Come on. We reading the Bible today, man. <clears throat> Come on, Romans chapter 9, verse 3 through 9. Here's what Apostle Paul says. He says, For I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ, for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. TV timeout. He's talking about the Israelites, because the Apostle Paul was born an Israelite, right? Well, verse 4 says, Who are Israelites? I guess I could have kept reading that. <laughs> To whom belongs the adoption as sons and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the temple service and the promises. Whose are the fathers and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. But it's not as though, says verse six, the word of God has failed. Watch this. For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel. Neither are they all Neither are they all children because they are Abraham's descendants. But through Isaac, your descendants will be named. That is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants. For this is a word of promise. At this time, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. See, here's the thing is that God is saying that even though the Israelites who were God's chosen people, who were given the covenants of promise, who were given the law, who were given the temple service, who was given the fathers, whom even Jesus Christ himself came out of. He says they are not Abraham's descendants just because they are naturally, physically, genetically a descendant. But he says that descendants are those who are of Christ, who are children of God. Children of the promise, people who are born again, men and women, people who are spirit filled, spirit led. Romans chapter eight says for all who are born of the, who are led by the spirit. These are the sons of God. Now, remember, thank you, Jesus, that the covenant is what is the foundation for being born again. It is the foundation for knowledge and for knowing God. Mm. So people who are covenant who are built and established upon covenant are the ones whom God says that you can be my child. You can be my people. I'm, I'm, I'm slow walking and I'm running. I guess I'm running out of time here. Ah, come on. Let's look at Galatians chapter four. Thank God for notes. Eight and nine. Galatians chapter four, verse eight through nine. It says this, however, at that time when you did not know God. No, no, let's look at verse seven because it builds more context. You know what? Let's look at verse six. I'm sorry. It says this. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Oh, man, I, I really want you to see this. I want you. Oh, man, it's a foundation. Know this. The covenant is established. It's an eternal truth. Jesus came. He says the new covenant is in my blood, right? And so when you receive Jesus, come on, the Bible tells us this, that we are redeemed by the what? The blood of Christ. 
And so when we receive Christ, we receive access into the covenant, this new covenant, this kingdom covenant, right? On the basis of this, we are now accepted as sons of God. All right. Galatians 4 says, verse 6, it says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So watch this. So again, the foundation of everything we have is covenant. We become sons because of covenant. But because we are sons, now we can receive the Holy Spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Why? Because it's a covenant-based experience and promise. All right, let's keep reading. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Verse 8, however, at that time when you did not know God, you were slaves to those which by nature are no gods. Watch this. But now, let's read that again. However, at that time when you did not know God, this means that when you were not a son, when you were not covenant people, you did not know God. You were slaves to those which by nature are no gods. But now that you have come to know God or rather be known by God, how is it that you turn back again to the weak and worthless elemental things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again? See, here's the point I'm trying to make to you is that Galatians 4 tells us that it is through covenant relationship with God that we are able to be known and to know God, known by God and to know God. <laughs> Knowing God is built upon covenant knowledge. And so if you're going to know God, you have to have covenant truth in your life. You have to be built upon covenant because God says, I don't, I don't know you. Who are you? You know, Jesus says this in uh, Matthew chapter seven. He says, there's going to be the day, a time when people come and say, Lord, did we not do this in your name? Did we not cast out devils? Did we not heal the sick in your name? And he's going to say to them, hmm, who was this again? Come to the like, hmm, no. He's going to depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. He said, but wait a minute. We casted out devils. We healed the sick in your name. He says, it don't matter. <laughs> you know, a devil can heal, can perform a miracle in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. It can be a witch. It can be a psychic. It can be somebody who has no relationship with God, who are not covenant people. And they can do things in the name of God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Excuse me. They can do whatever they want to do, whatever they want to do in the name of God. But watch this. Jesus is going to be like, are you covenant? Come on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord is so good. Uh, listen, we might not shout today, but this will fill your soul. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to go to Luke 10 real quick. I want, I want to show you this. See, covenant comes with information. I, I, why am I? I'm, I got off track and I had some really good stuff for you. I'm going to try to hit it very quickly. Watch this. Romans, I mean, he, um, Luke 10, 17, it says this, and the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And behold, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall injure you. Verse 20, nevertheless, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. That you can tread upon serpents and that you have power over, I'm sorry, that you have authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall injure you. He says, don't rejoice in this. He says, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Mm. In other words, they're written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that your name is there. Wait a minute. So the only way, come on, for me to be able to be known by God is to be submitted to covenant. Whew. 
that will cause my name to be written in the scrolls of heaven. I'm telling you this because I'm, I'm trying to show you the science, the breakdown of how all this works, why this works. It's not hocus pocus how you get saved. No, it's you receive and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Glory to God. And hallelujah, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Why? Because it gives us, come on, the ability to partake and to uh, be included in his covenant. Mm, mm, mm. At that time, we then get our names written. God says, Bryson, G, Baylor. Oh, he's cool. <laughs> he can come in. Right? And so, then God says, then I can know you. And you can begin to know me. Because remember, you can only know me by covenant knowledge. I think this is just a setup for next week. Because I got to go. Let me give you this. I, I, I've said, well, you know, there's stuff in here tonight. But I just feel like it was just not as exciting as I normally want it to be, you know. But whatever. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 one more time. Just give me a few minutes. And I want to get this into your heart. And I want you to see this um, very clearly. Hebrews 10. Verses 15 through 17. Help me, Jesus. Man. Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. The Lord is good. We thank you. Your word is perfect and never fails. Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. Here's what Jesus says through the scriptures. It says, And the Holy Ghost also bears witness to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, says the Lord. Watch what he says. I'm going to put my laws upon their heart. And upon their mind, I will write them. He then says, and their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Hmm. So, come on, family. When we receive Christ... And we accept them. Remember, John 1 and 12. For as many as received him... As what? Not just as a prophet, but as Lord, as Savior, right? When we receive him, we position ourselves, come on, to be surrendered under the covenant that he embraces. We say, Jesus, we're with you, and we are now submitted to kingdom covenant. Whatever you tell us to do, we do. Whatever you tell us to go, we'll go. Now he says this. Now what I'm going to do is, he says, I'm going to write my covenant, my laws, on their heart and upon their mind. And he says, I'm going to remember your lawless deeds and your sin no more. But let's, let's, let's just because this is Wednesday night, let's go backwards to Hebrews 8. It's almost the exact same scripture, but it gives just a little bit more nuance. Hebrews 8, verse 6. It says this, but now Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry by as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless or without fault, there would have been no occasion sought for a second. For finding fault with them, God says, now this is the same verse we just read in Hebrews uh, 10, behold, Days are coming, says the Lord, when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and I will write them upon their hearts. Watch this. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Let's just start right there real quick. So. The, whoo, glory to God. 
Come on. It is through the entrance of covenant knowledge. Ooh, come on. That establishes the foundation for us to be known by God and to know God. God says, I will be your God and you're going to be my people. Why? Because you're operating by covenant. Because <laughs> I put my laws into your minds and I'll write them on your hearts. You see, the covenant is the foundation, but that's not the, that's not the kicker in this part. Verse 11, and they shall not teach everyone his citizen, his fellow citizen, and everyone his brother, saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Verse 13, and when he said a new covenant, he made the first obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. Ooh, family, let me tell you this. What we may have missed is that God says they're going to tell. You can't tell nobody in this day, know the Lord. Why? He says, because all will know me. How will they know him? Because he wrote his laws on their minds and on their hearts. Because Covenant knowledge is the foundation for knowing God. See, it is when you abide and you operate within the covenant of God, that knowledge of God is revealed. The more you operate in kingdom covenant, the more God will reveal his goodness to you the more of the light and the life of God will be your portion. Ooh, you you got to know this. This is why I told you, now knowing God is built upon covenant knowledge. We literally just read it, Hebrews 10. I'm sorry, Hebrews 8, 6 through 13. He says, in that day, nobody will say, know God or know the Lord. He says, for all shall know me. This is just an alley-oop for where we're going next week. So I'm sorry. It's the setup. <laughs> it's the setup. Right? So it's a little, you know, whatever. We do a little work. But knowing God is built upon covenant knowledge. And so it's covenant people who are the only ones who can know God. So if you don't operate in covenant, come on, if you forsake the covenant of God, if you, if you just abandon the new covenant, the kingdom covenant, you say, I'm going to do my own thing. Can, do you really know God? Nope. Because God has released life through his covenant. God has built and established everything pertaining to life and godliness based on this covenant. Now, this is not like works based, like, oh, you don't do this. You don't know God. You mess up. No, this is all faith based. But I'm telling you this per the Bible. Is that knowing God is, is based upon our ability to know his precepts. And so Adam, what triggered death for him was when he transgressed the covenant. So it was his transgression of the covenant of God. We know at least one, we don't know the whole scope of it, but we know at least one element was don't eat the tree, don't eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I mean, we know that, that's clear. But the element is. He says, if you do, you'll die. Could it be that when we step outside of covenant knowledge, it will trigger death? Hence why the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus. Oh, but what is eternal life? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. This is John 17 and 3. He says, and this is eternal life. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going here and I'm shutting the Bible. Come on, this is a great lesson tonight. John chapter 17 and 3. I know it, but I want to just read it. It says this, and this is eternal life. That they may know thee. The only true God 
and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So if the wages of sin is death, or the wages of transgressing or violating God's covenant is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift, the presence, the promise, the opportunity of God is eternal life in Christ. Eternal life is knowing God. According to John 17 and 3, and his son, how do we know God? Based off our covenant adherence and walking in. If you are led by the Spirit, says Paul in Galatians 5, then we ought to walk in the Spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. It is your covenant acknowledgement, submission, and obedience that generates life within you. Or rather, the knowledge of God, which will create more life. Mm. I messed up. <clears throat> this is so critical. I'm done. We're going to make a jump next week on Wednesday. That'll be a blessing to you. <clears throat> um, and it's going to make more sense to this why it's a setup. But uh, know this is that you can know the Lord. First John chapter 2 and 27 says, For you have the Holy Ghost. And you need no one to teach you. Teach you what? You don't need anybody to teach you about God because the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. But you still need pastors. You still need fivefold gifting. You still need the support of the brethren. But in terms of knowing God, foundational aspect, you don't need it because the Holy Ghost is in you. And he's written his laws on your heart and your mind. My prayer is this. Ooh, is that you will not run into a dead end as you seek God. As you obey and as you submit yourself to kingdom covenant, the kingdom law, the word of God, come on, through the, fount, through the filter of Jesus Christ, our Savior who has paid the price for us. As you seek God in that capacity, I pray that you will come to a knowledge of God that is expansive. I pray that you're not just, I know him, but I know, like, that's my guy. Like, I know him. Like, no, I know him, that I experience him, that he talks with me, he walks with me. Along life's narrow way. I pray that is your portion tonight. Mm. And this is why we want this testimony of Christ confirmed in us. It's because then, as our knowledge of God is increasing, <laughs> come on, our ability to perceive him in life circumstances. Our ability to see him when the way seems dark will also be increased. And the power of God will become your portion more and more because this covenant, the testimony of Christ, is confirmed in you. Mm. We're going to be a church where they say, they know him over there. <laughs> they know him. They may not be perfect, but they know him. They may not get everything right, but we know them. And my prayer is that you know God and that you will grow in this knowledge of God. That it won't be basic. That it will be dynamic and glorious just as our God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that you know what we need and you give us what we need when we need it. We thank you, Father, that there is life in your word. Your word says that your words are life. And so, Father, we thank you tonight for life. We thank you for just the ability to gather around your word and to hear from you. Father, we pray that this would be a, a true kingdom seed in our hearts that would produce fruit some 30, 60, 100 fold. Father, we pray right now that knowledge of you would increase, that our awareness of you would increase, that our ability to walk after you would increase. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I love you, Lord. Thank you so much for tonight. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we out. Come back Sunday, 10 a.m. It's going to be great. I promise you. It's going to be great. I got a great word for you. Um, if you didn't get a chance to give, so tonight the information is on the screen for you to do that. My God, I'm telling you this. Listen, 
this is a, I promise you, this is an alley-oop, and there's going to be to be continued next week, all right? Hallelujah. Listen, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus is Lord and your Savior, that's the beginning of it. That's how you're able to enter into this true, this great covenant. Jesus says in the Bible, uh, if you, that you must be born again, because unless you're born again, you won't be able to see the kingdom of God. You won't be able to see these precious promises, this opportunity, this foundational system that God has established. So I want to encourage you tonight to be born again. To give your life over to Jesus, to say, Lord, I surrender. I give my life to Jesus Christ. I lay down everything I am, my past, my present, and my future, my good and my bad. Things I'm proud of, the things I'm ashamed of, everything about me, I lay it down and surrender to Jesus. I need his life. I need this life. I want this life. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I want greater. Even if I love doing it on my own, God, I want greater I see the opportunity. I see the potential with you. I'm taking it. If that's you today, listen, just pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Everything is yours. I lay it down. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, as my King. As my King. And I'll follow and I will submit to his word, the word of the kingdom, his kingdom covenant. Thank you, Jesus. And I confess Jesus says, Lord, and I believe in my heart that, God, you raised him from the dead for my sins to give me access into this wonderful future that you have for me. I give you my life this day forward in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it from your heart, I'm telling you, God has saved you today. You are entered into this new relationship that your name has been written and recorded in heaven. And he says, oh yeah, he's cool. She's cool. <laughs> I know them. I know them. And God wants to enter, enter into a relationship with you. If that's you today, listen, I want to pray with you. I want to help walk with you on this journey. I want you to put in the comments, hashtag Jesus. And that way we can be able to communicate with you. Send us a direct message in the inbox. And someone from our team will be able to get in touch with you and to walk with you. And to help you grow in your journey and salvation. Listen, if you don't have a church home, listen, what are you doing? You need to get connected with this church. Listen, you watching. Maybe God, God probably wants you to be a part of what we're doing. All right. Listen, if that's you, I want you to send us a direct message or inbox or put in the comments, hashtag Jesus. Amen. Because you need a church. That's a part of Kingdom Covenant. You need a church. God has established fivefold leadership, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints. So that you can grow and you can walk in the fullness of what God has called you to. Amen. And so listen, we want to walk with you. Listen, you need us. We need you. We need each other. So we want to encourage you. If you don't have a church home, this should be your church home. If that's you, in the comments right now, hashtag church. Or send us a direct message. Inbox. Hashtag church. I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to welcome you into our church family. And be a part of what God is doing here as we follow God and live as kings. Listen, that's it tonight. I love you. Let me bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, we release the blessing for the rest of this week. We pray that knowledge of you would be expanded. That as we read the word, it would not just be rules and regulations or thuses and vows, but it would be life, steps, pathways to your face, to knowing you my God, to knowing your ways, not just your acts. We pray that tonight. We pray that it would not be dull, but life, invigorating life that will cause cancer to dry out and would cause affliction and disease to be uh, cast out of us and to be broken in our lives forever. We thank you for this knowledge, ooh, that would grant us access to prosperity and abundance every righteous thing you have for us, every good thing. So, Father, we release this tonight. I bless these people. May their nights be filled with joy and peace and rest. May their days be filled with increased strength and victory and triumph. And may your love abound in their hearts forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Peace and blessings, family. We'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m., same platform. Come on. See you Sunday. Love you. Peace.